more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Bavarians is for your man and you too. What's that you say? No boulder dash or baloney here. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentleman. And now, breaking the seal all over the finer things of life, Greg, Scott, and Dan. Welcome in, everybody. That's us. We are sort of the Unfiltered Gentleman today. I am Greg. Here's Dan. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, there he is right there. Not really. I'm Greg. I'm being joined by a much better looking crowd of people today. Uh, in the old man's seat, that's Shannon. Oh, but her mic's not on. That's me. Try that again. Hello. And next to her is Deb. Hello. How's it going, guys? Doing all right. Good. Yeah. Glad to hear it. Uh, we had a bit of a scheduling snafu. We had to record at a different time. Uh, the old man, I think, was getting his uh, annual prostate exam going. Yikes. You get old and that's what happens. And then uh, something to do with Dan not having a car and already being drunk. His segue. You can't drink and segue. At the same time. So here we are. Self a prostate exam. It's, <laughs> it's highly likely. It is Friday after all. It's the weekly prostate night. Uh, so anyways, because we're surrounded by ladies, no burp word of the week. I just figure that's that's inappropriate for you too. Unless, I just wouldn't be very good at it. That too. Yeah. Plus we never do it anyways. We talk about it and we never do it. Mm. Uh, but big shout out to Camarillo, California for being our top listening city of last week. Keeping it local. Thank you, Camarillo. All of uh, four people that live there. Small city. Don't forget to hashtag show us your beers on the social medias. Rate and subscribe. Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify. However you get your podcast. Give us a little rate and subscription there. I don't know about you ladies. I'm feeling quite parched over here. Should we get into beer of the week? Heck yeah. Let's do it. Grab your libations, pals. It's time for beer of the week. And if you're drinking well, you know that you're my friend And I'll say, I think I'll have myself a beer We're having ourselves quite a beer indeed In front of us is True Brewmance, an IPA from 8-Bit Brewing It's 7.1%, 55 IBUs, has a 3.78 on untapped From the brewery, very long description A West Coast IPA brewed with mosaic hops there you have it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Keeping it long. This one comes to us by way of our friend Allie and Callie. She sent this up here when she was making fun of Scott and sent him an Angel's Cup. She also sent me this for my birthday, and it kind of got lost in the shuffle, and I realized the night I still hadn't drank this yet, and we got to get this bad boy while it's still freshish. Yeah. She says, Greg, since I didn't buy you a beer when you were down here in San Diego, cheers. So that's what we're drinking. Ladies, what do we think of uh, True Brewman's? I really like it. It's like really tropical on the nose. Um, and then you get, you definitely, I mean, it, it got a little hot pine to it, um, but it's not overwhelming. It's got a good balance. Yeah, it's fairly well balanced. I definitely agree with what Shannon said, and I love anything with mosaic. It's a fun hop. I found that too. I really like mosaic hops. Interesting. And the 55 IBU is like right at my threshold for uh, hoppiness. Yeah. I'd agree. Yeah, it's it's definitely easy drinking. It's not overbearing on the hoppiness. Fairly well balanced, which is uh, always nice. Especially, they say it's a West Coast IPA. Eh, it's not like an old school West Coast IPA. This is more of a balanced, what's happening today, West Coast IPA. That's sort of the new trend, right? It's to sort of... Absolutely, and I love that trend. I just, when somebody says West Coast IPA, I'm thinking like... Stone IPA. Right, exactly. You know? Something that's going to take the enamel off your teeth. Yeah. yeah. It's going to smell like one of those pine tree car fresheners. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that how you want your beer to smell? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sign me up. Yeah, it sounds great. So, uh, anyways, 8 Bit Brewing. This is my first beer from 8 Bit Brewing. Have you guys had 8 Bit Brewing before? No. Are they based out of Sacramento? Is that them? I don't know. I kind of thought they were like the Temecula area. I guess I could have done my homework and figured that out. <laughs> Yeah, I thought it was down in, like, San Diego area, yeah. for sure. I'm thinking of somebody else, then. Oh, okay. Maybe intern Brian can figure this out. We have an intern in the room today. Most overpaid intern ever. He's figuring it out. We'll, we'll move on while he <laughs> looks that up. Uh, in the meantime, we got a lot to get to. Marietta, 
Marietta, California. That's oh. that's southish, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's near Temecula. Yeah, okay, I wasn't too far off. Uh, i got a lot to get to. Today we've got some sports talk. Without Dan, that'll be interesting. Um, old timey of the week, of course, Beer Babe, which is always awkward when your wife's in the room. Got some booze news to talk about, and of course, a bullpen beer. But let's just break off into <laughs> some aptly named crotch talk. <laughs> have a grievance to share? It's time for a crotch talk. Uh, well, I don't know that I have any grievances. I did want to mention that if you didn't listen to it last week, interview with Scott Ungerman of Anchor Brewing. We talked first and foremost about Christmas Ale and kind of what goes into that and how they make it different every year and all of that. But we we really got into his history and his background as a brewer, as a drinker. Uh, he started with Budweiser, made his way to Anchor and all that good stuff. I, I thoroughly enjoyed talking to him and, and hopefully you guys, if you haven't listened to it, go back and listen to it and enjoy it as well. Anybody have any grievances to share? Wow, that's good. That's a good week. That's yeah. good, yeah. Any uh, fun beer experiences? You try anything new? I've been doing this thing where instead of drinking beer, Uh-oh. I'm drinking champagne. Oh. Because I said I was going to take a break from beer, but I didn't necessarily say I was going to take a break from alcohol. Sure. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, have you mixed any like white claws in there? No, but you know what we're really into is the Natty Light seltzer. Oh, God. Oh, dear. Yeah, my favorite is called Aloha Beaches. <laughs> <laughs> they do have great names for the Natty Light what, ones. What does that taste like? It's That's one I think is kind of mango. Mm. The other one is the Catalina, what is it? Catalina Lime Mixer. Okay. Hmm. And that one's like a cranberry it's lime. A freaking Catalina Wine Mixer. Exactly. Interesting. And how's that working out for you? Is this like a diet or just... I don't know. Just it's just thought you'd lay off. It's just one of those things. I just wanted to shake things up. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, you are a former beer employee of sorts. I still kind of am. You still on the weekends every now and then are when I'm needed. Do you have any good stories from uh, working behind the the bar there? I didn't preface you with this <laughs> at all. This is like totally spraying. It on I know you. you threw it on me. Sorry. Um. No, not particularly. Right. I, I mean, always like to talk to bartenders and like, what fucking annoys you? And then they always... Oh, God. No, there's a, there's like a laundry list of things that annoy you. Right. But, um, no, I mean, the only thing that I would say is like, it's really cool to have your regulars, people that come in and, sure. and make it so it's, you know, not quite as exhausting. Um, when you work in a bar or a brewery, you're on your feet all day and, mm-hmm. you know, you're bending and lifting and moving kegs and all sorts of stuff and so that's like the perk of it is just having the good people that come in and make you feel a little bit better about your day don't creep you out don't creep you out yeah because there's definite creepers oh yeah but we try to forget about them when we leave well i mean i see that as someone who doesn't work at a brewery like i go to our local integrin and sometimes Brittany, the the head brewer there will walk behind the bar and guys will make comments and it's like you know she's the one that made your beer right she, right. could, she could also spit yeah. in it, so shut the fuck up. <laughs> Brittany is an absolute badass, and mm-hmm. when you meet her, and she's she's this tiny little thing. Right. And she's just out there just, like, kicking all these dudes' asses, making better beer than a lot of the other people out there. Yeah, I think she weighs all of 68 pounds, and mm-hmm. today, she just walks up with a keg. She's like, here you go. <laughs> I was like, thanks. Like, like nothing. No effort. I was like, let me plug this out to my car now. <laughs> so, uh, Yes. All right. Uh, is is there a yes? I did come up with a crotch talk while we were talking. Okay. So I was at Costco today. Uh huh. And for one thing, the beer selection at Costco for they use they they are very hit and miss now. And we used to be able to go there and get all sorts of Firestone. Oh yeah, all the or, box releases or local breweries in a grin yeah. pretty consistently. Mm-hmm. All I am seeing is freaking Golden Road, mm. and I'm over it. But I'm. I'm over the like multi pack. Bring back my like four pack or single bottle. I want some more specialty beers at Costco. But also, while we were walking through Costco, there were these two like middle aged women who were in the wine area, wine co- topic. But they were talking about Chronic Cellars, a bottle mm. of wine from Chronic, and they're hemming and hawing. And it is a big decision. And mind you, this is a I know which bottle, bottle you're talking about. It was probably $12. It was ten ninety nine. Oh, it was on sale. But they're hemming and hawing over this bottle of red wine. And so I just walk by. I'm trying to be nice. I'm like, it's actually a really good bottle of wine. Like, for the price, pretty good wine. I don't know what you're buying it for, but it's pretty good It's half the price wine. that it is at the, at the winery. Right. So, and they're like, 
oh my gosh, thank you so much. Do you drink red wine? You know, do you think this is a good one? Are there any others here you would recommend? And I was like, oh, well, if you see Josh, Josh is pretty good too. She said, no, I'm more of an Arbor Mist kind of girl. <laughs> well, then all of a Boone's sudden, farm. I guess yeah. because I had said you something, heard my friend Charles. all of a sudden they wanted me to like walk with them through the wine section. Oh, you were their private sommelier. Mm. Apparently. And I was like, I am getting, I am in a hurry. And I'm getting, I, I feel like my kindness was not rewarded. Mm -hmm. And then I felt kind of awkward because I had to kind of be a bitch and be like, okay, bye. <laughs> like, I, I, I didn't realize I was walking into something that was such a commitment. Did you have like a Costco uh, jacket on or something? No, no vest. <laughs> it, was a, it was a red shirt at Target. Like, <laughs> no, but like, I, I don't know. In that scenario, if you don't know what you want, I feel like maybe not shopping at Costco. Mm -hmm. Like if Go to you total wine. right, if Ask you want questions. a little no, bit more, if they're overwhelmed by the wine selection at Costco. What? They will be <laughs> fucked at Total Wine. At least they wine. can ask questions. Right, but Costco's not the place to go and ask. None of the workers are going to know that wine. That's true. That's true. If they wanted to. And so I actually said to them at one point, like, she was like, well, I wish we could just taste it. And I was like, well, if you want to do tastings, you really should go to Total Wine or Trader Joe's. There's a Total Wine in this parking lot. Yeah. Because the Woodland Hills Costco has Total Wine. Anyway. Way to get some specific. Super there. specific. Yeah. Specific. All right. So that's my grievance. I, I was Fuck like... Fuck you, you old hags. No, it wasn't even that. And then I felt bad for having to kind of be mean. Oh, don't feel bad for that. I like being mean. Yeah. But at least you helped somebody get drunk. You you did your good deed. Her doctor. Day. She was buying a bottle of wine for her doctor. Okay. And he likes red wine. I found out a lot. I'm not going to lie. All doctors like red wine. Bottle of wine and a pack of cigarettes for the doctor? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Virginia Good. Slims. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's less nicotine in those. It's it's okay. All right. Any other grievances or should we move on to the little sports talk? Mm -hmm. I'm good. All right. Let's, let's talk a little sports. And now the sports brought to you by cleaninguptheglass.com. Whether it's the Baltimore Chop or the one-two punch... It's time for sports. So Steph Curry broke his, well, fractured his hand a couple weeks back and uh, had surgery on it last week. Rumors started surfacing that he won't be playing the rest of the season. The team quickly jumped on that and said, what the fuck? He will definitely not be ruled out as of yet. Uh, they're going to check back in three months and reevaluate the situation. It sounds like he won't play the rest of the season. Is this the end of the Warriors? I mean, for this season? Well, definitely. This, and there's probably. no Clay. There's probably no Steph. Yeah. I've heard rumors of uh, the Lakers interested in a couple of people. They haven't played very well. No. Without him. Even with him. Is, Sh is Shaq there? <laughs> Shaq. <laughs> yeah, they signed him to a 10-day contract. So I hate to break it to you, but I don't follow basketball. That's fine. Oh, sorry, guys. It's he all right. Yeah, I was sad, A, that he got injured. But B, that he got injured in such a meh, meh way. Yeah, he fell on his hand. Yeah. And fractured it. It's it, really a... Uh, in any other... He could have fallen ball. that way a hundred times. Mm -hmm. It was just that once that it... Yeah, it's true. Well, moving on to more basketball news. The <laughs> NBA has fined the Clippers $50,000 because they wanted to sit uh, Kawhi Leonard. The NBA gave them permission... They came up with some reason, said it's uh, not because they're just resting him, it's because he has that knee injury from last year. Then after the game, they're interviewing Doc Rivers, Doc Rivers, about sitting him in his health, and he goes, no, he's perfectly healthy. So the NBA got mad that they didn't hold up their end of the lie and fined him $50,000. Good job, Clippers and Doc Rivers. So wait, who's the shittier one in this scenario? The NBA. Okay. I mean, I hate Doc Rivers. That guy can fucking suck it. But the NBA is like, yeah, well, well we, we can make up a lie. That's fine. Oh, you didn't stick with the lie. We're fining you. And by doing that, you just brought more attention to the fact that you guys were in on this lie. Well, and also, what a measly lie, uh, fine. Mm -hmm. $50,000 means nothing. Yeah, especially to the team. It's not even right. to a player. They didn't find Doc Rivers 50000 They should have. They, they find the whole Don't team. Don't find me. If anybody doesn't know That's probably less does. than their basketball budget, like for actual basketballs. Oh, for physical balls? Yeah. Yes, I'm sure it is. 
Um, and you ball budget. <laughs> <laughs> What's your ball budget like? <laughs> we should Google that. Yeah, about a six pack of beer. Uh, and Carmelo Anthony says that he's. See, I'm sorry. This would have been a much more funny conversation with Dan here. Uh, he's surprised that he isn't on a re- on a roster yet. Does anybody in this room know who Carmelo Anthony is? Intern Brian. Intern does. Brian. Yeah. Uh, Carmelo Anthony was the most overrated player of all time. He called himself a superstar. He's barely a star. Made a couple of all-star teams. He hasn't been put on a roster because he is a locker room cancer. And uh, for some reason, they haven't figured out that him and James Harden are essentially the same player. Just one has a beard. I was going to say, I know James Harden because of his beard. Yeah, that's about it. Hmm. He doesn't play any defense. You don't know him for that. Uh, You might know him for a lot of turnovers. And then finally, NFL news. Multiple players have filed injury grievances against the Jets. Apparently, people are getting injured. They're not letting them get surgery for it and then fining them for not going to practice because they needed surgery. They're not approving the surgery. Then they're releasing them while they're still injured, which you can't do because then they're left to pay for their own injuries and whatever. So good job, Jets. Wow. Bunch of dicks. Yeah, Yeah, that's shitty. Yeah, that's kind of shitty. All right. Old timey word of the week. Corporation corporation it's a large belly yeah a large but like a like a stomach like, like a, a fat large, guy like a fat yeah. dude yeah look at that guy over there with his big corporation you okay know? yeah yeah it's a it's a nice uh nice way to call someone fat and they don't have to realize it yeah yeah all right let's move on to uh, what will be the most awkward part for me today there's nothing better than a babe with craft beer it's time for beer babe of the week Her name is Christy. You can find her on the grams at IPA girl, IPA dot girl. Uh, in this one, she's drinking a beer from Green Cheek Beer Company. Hmm. She's pretty. Oh, okay. Oh, she yeah. is pretty. Super pretty. Do we Look approve? at her eyes. She's beautiful eyes. I know. I love yeah. her hair, too. Mm-hmm. All right, good. So you approve. Yeah. So I'm not in pretty. trouble. All right, good. That was, that was a little awkward for me. Why? I don't know. Because you're my wife. My wife. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, enough of that. We have a bullpen beer to get to. We got a little news to talk through. How are you ladies doing on your first beers? Not that I want you to pound anything. Uh, that sounded really That's dirty. That's your job with your wife later. Yeah. <laughs> Just you wait. Uh, all right, we'll start the news, then we'll bring it back around to the bullpen beer. Extra, extra, drink all about it. It's time for booze news. It is indeed. Uh, <laughs> speaking of seltzers, Four Loco Seltzer has hit the shelves, coming in at 12%. Woo woo. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Who's ready for some rape juice? <laughs> well, first of all, does Coley know about this? I don't know. Should we call her? We should definitely. We got to tell her. Why? Do you think she'll be excited? Yeah, she has all sorts of Four Loco stories. Oh, well, I mean, who doesn't have Four Loco stories? I was going to say, we, Brian and I have some Four Loco stories. Can we share some? One of well, the one that we always tell was when we first moved in together. Um, we had an empty apartment, and the next day we were picking up the moving truck and moving all of our stuff from my place and his place. Mm-hmm. But we decided to spend the night in our first apartment together that was just completely empty. Okay, and so we got a frozen pizza and some sleeping bags and um and some beer, and we quickly realized that. The frozen pizza was like we the gas wasn't on yet in the apartment or something, so we couldn't put it in the oven, and there was no microwave. Oh, so we had no food, so we just drank, and we quickly ran out of the six pack that we brought. So we walked down to the Seven Eleven that was close to our apartment, and I don't know why we had this great idea of let's just drink four loco. Sure, like neither mm-hmm. one of us have had one in a we'll while. We'll make it a night, right? We were, we were both in our 30s at that point. I think it was right after my 30th birthday. And I was like, I can still do this. I'm in my 30s, but I can still do this now. And so we Famous got last words. four locos and we drank them all. And I think we each got two of them. And oh, we geez. drank them both. Was this back when it was the real four loco before they changed it? This was like 2014. So yeah, probably yeah. right around mm-hmm. that time. No caffeine. Uh, oh, no caffeine. I don't Brian know what it was. But yeah, we... Then in the morning had to, you know, move everything that we owned and we were basically Hurting. dead. We were basically dead. Yeah. And, I would imagine. and moving. So have you ever 
uh, Shannon had Four Loco? I have not, no. Yeah, I figured. Yeah. I've only had one experience with the real Four Loco before they had to change it. Um, I, I was out with uh, my best friend. Her little sister had a soccer game at the local high school. She goes, you want to go to the soccer game? I said, fuck no, I don't. <laughs> she goes, well, we can drink. I said, now you have my attention. So we went to the liquor store. We we bought up. We brought some Four Locos. We each had our own. And afterwards, I didn't feel anything because that caffeine really counteracts that booze. Mm-hmm. So I'm feeling good. Then we go out for pizza. And by pizza, I mean we went and shared a pizza and then had a couple of pictures. Then after that, we went to a local bar. And I'm still feeling really good and kind of hyper. And so <laughs> so after that, we go to a bar that's just, just across the street. We had a couple more pictures. So I think between the two of us, we each had one for Loco and split I believe it was three, maybe four pitchers. And then I, we're like, all right, well, night's over. And we had pizza too. Night's over. So we started walking towards the car. At that point, her sister texted me. was like, are you okay to drive? I can come get you guys. I'm like, no, I'm surprisingly A-OK, but thank you. Dropped her off. As I leave, as I'm pulling out of her driveway, I'm going down the street to go to my house. All of a sudden, it fucking hit me. And I was like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. I don't know how I'm going to get the mile and a half home. And I was driving stick at the time, which, man, that'll help sober you up a little bit. But, <laughs> oh, my God, it was it hit me like a ton of bricks how fucked up I was. And I was like, just drive straight. Made it home, took as many residentials as possible. Luckily, it was like one in the morning. And then when I woke up the next morning, I had, back when I had an early morning shift, I had to wake up at like five in the morning. And I was like, fuck, I bet I didn't do anything. I go downstairs. I had set my coffee to go. I had made my lunch. I'd done everything I would have normally done sober, but I had no recollection of it. It was interesting. Yikes. I also wasn't hung over at all, which was great. I so you if- were like more productive drunk off of Four Loco yeah. than like most people are sober. It was kind of like doing cocaine. <laughs> so I've been told. Uh, yeah, it was it was insane. It was horrible once it hit me. Though. I was like, oh, fuck. Because, yeah. I mean, it should have. We we split three pitchers of beer. Like, it should have hit me. And I was really surprised when I was walking to my car. I'm like, I'm A-OK. This is weird. Delayed response. A very delayed response. So I wish I would have waited, like, another five minutes till I got home. But anyways, that's my Four loco story. And uh, I can't imagine that 12% seltzers are going to be good for anybody. No. It's not why you drink, drink them. It's just going to be college kids getting fucked up. Mm-hmm. Uh, good luck, everybody. All right. Should we move on to a... Uh, to call in the pen. How you guys doing over there with your yeah, beverages? I'm, I'm yeah. good. All right. I'm going to make a call to the pen. Uh, maybe interim Brian can help pass the, the uh, beer over there. He calls to the bullpen for beer. So we are drinking one that was brought to us by and being poured horribly by. <laughs> <laughs> Intern Brian should be doing a better job of helping. <laughs> <laughs> Deb's doing her best over there. Uh, I didn't. Even re- I didn't even realize this. Deb brought this. Deb and Brian brought this to us from their trip in Oregon. I found in the back of the fridge. I was like, "Who gave this to me?" I cannot remember. And then when she saw it, she's like, "We fucking gave that to you, asshole." So I'm we're excited. We're drinking Oakshire Brewing. Uh, their Overcast Espresso Stout out of Eugene, Oregon. It's 5.8%, has 27 IBUs, has a 3.84 on Untapped, and an 87 on Beer Advocate. From the brewery, they say, Overcast Skies inspired a dark and smooth oatmeal stout blended with cold brewed coffee, offering a full palette of roasted malts, chocolate, and espresso. I love this beer. I love it so much. So the reason that you ended up with it in your fridge is because every time I go to Oregon to visit my family there... There is um, a market in town where my grandfather lives, and they always have this there. So every time I go to visit, you can't get this in California. So every time I go to visit, I make sure to get as much of this as I can. And Mm -hmm. I drink it the whole time I'm there. And I love it. Yeah, it's great. It smells like coffee. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really what you get on the nose. It smells like gold brew. Mm -hmm, Yeah. Totally. Um, And I love the mouthfeel of it. It has a really – it's not super full – yeah, but a little it's bit not lighter the, body yeah, than you would expect a, from a yeah. stout. Yeah, you get that I, oatmeal. It almost has that like velvety. Yeah, velvety. Yes. It almost has that black lager mm-hmm, mm-hmm, taste to it. That. A little bit. 
Um, yeah, that, that, that chocolatey roastiness yeah. that you get from like Nighthawk, which is a local black lager around mm-hmm. here. Yeah, it's really good. You get a lot of coffee too, though. I'd say this has more of that coffee-ness to it than the black lager you're thinking of. Um, but really easy to drink. 5.8% may not be too high, but this could go down real quick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But delicious. Thank you for bringing. Of yeah, course. It's so good. Um, back to the news. Have we all been keeping up on the shit show going down at Founders? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> So we talked about last week the the case where the lawyer denied or the excuse me, not the lawyer but the general manager denied being able to see color uh, in this racial discrimination lawsuit. Now Founders Brewing has reached a settlement with Tracy Evans, who is the uh, guy who is suing them in the d- racial discrimination lawsuit. They have not released the terms, of course. Uh, Tracy says, "I wanted the world to know the power we have when we step forward and make ourselves heard." Upon hearing us, businesses also have the power to make changes or not. I don't know what happens from here within the doors of founders. I do know this. We have legal resolution and we have started looking at uh, looking at how all of this effect is affecting human lives. Yeah, guys, don't be racist. It's that simple. <laughs> That's the moral of the story, right? That's the right? moral yeah. of the story. Uh, so they, they reach their settlement and uh, we'll see what happens. All I've seen on the internet is like people pouring out their CBS and their KBS. So the other oh. thing I want to say is anybody that says like, I don't see color, they literally don't have any friends that aren't white. Right. Yeah. Or like, they're or they're literally colorblind. Right. Or, like, or they're literally. <laughs> literally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's uh, that's just, I mean, that had to be a lawyer saying just just deny everything. Right. Yeah. Uh, fucking lawyers. <laughs> fucking lawyers. Sorry to the lawyer in the room. Yeah. That was yeah. That was the best question. Is Barack Obama black? I do not know. Is he African American? I don't know his orig- origins. Like, oh my god, this it was the worst thing ever. It only made them look worse. That's so awkward. Yeah, I think you would have been better off saying, you know what, we had some momentary lapses in judgment. We made some really horrible jokes that shouldn't have been made, and we're sorry, and and we're learning from this experience. Instead of like, oh, he was black. I don't know. I don't know where he came from. Which also horrible term, right? Yeah. So it was it was ridiculous. Moving on. Molson Co- Molson Coors announces a plan to restructure the company, lay off tons of employees and reinvest one hundred and fifty million dollars a year back into their core products. Yeah. So part of that investment, I saw this on Instagram. There was a whole series of memes going through. Uh-huh. Part of that Molson is that Coors memes. they <laughs> am I confusing this? This is no, like go for it. Keystone, right? Is one of their beers. Um. That's Am I wrong? Miller Coors. Oh, I mixed them up. Why? What did you? But go ahead. So Miller Coors, it had invested all this stuff in like Instagram marketing, and they made this whole thing about like bring home a a case of Keystone for right. your family for the holidays or whatever. Oh, and that's what uh, I won't be doing. I guess they closed um, a local factory. And laid off like 150 people. Oh. And so all of these people are um, commenting on these Instagram posts saying like, I guess that's all they'll have to bring home to their family for oh. the holidays. Oh. And like, oh. So I think that uh, campaign isn't really working for them very well. Yeah, not so much. All right. Brian's looking it up. I can see him on his phone. I think we'll see how wrong I am. I think Molson Coors is the biggest of the parent companies. And Miller Coors is like an offshoot. Like a subsidiary? And I think, Ke- am I right? Oh, oh, okay, I'm getting the thumbs up. And then Keystone is a part of Miller Coors, which is a part of Col- uh, Molson so maybe, Coors. So maybe it's that the big company laid people off. Which, yeah, they're, they're laying people off. They are closing factories. So they're closing I think locations. that's part of what it is, is yeah. that they're laying people off. And so now people are going after Miller Coors' campaigns yeah. mm-hmm. and saying like, those people don't have money to spend on your beer for the holidays. Right. By the way, I like having fact checking in the room. This yeah, is it is nice. Yeah. What are you doing next week? Uh, quarter three for Boston Beer Company, you know, uh, Sam Adams and all those guys, mm-hmm. sees a 30% growth. Most of that comes from Truly. Sales. Truly. <laughs> all them basic bitches. I love Truly. I'm one of them. All the we- flavors but pineapple. 
Oh, yeah. it's the worst. We tried the new recipes, though. Oh, yeah. You know, a few weeks ago on the show, we talked about how they're releasing the new recipes. We got the new recipes, and they are better. What? Yeah. yeah. Surprising. Like, pineapple is minutely better, because it's already pineapple. Mm-hmm. But the rest of them, like, the lime tasted almost like Sprite. Like, it, it just had Whoa. more punch to the flavor. And there's a pomegranate now. Pomegranate was pretty mm, good. Dang. Yeah. I so. like the mango and the grapefruit. Those are my two favorites. Yeah, I like those, too. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, Costco's got the multi-pack. That's so, we-, we always buy Truly... Because of the fact that it's Boston Beer Company. Same. Right. Yeah. yeah. So It's the only one we'll buy because it's the only craft beer brand. Exactly. The rest of them are owned by big yeah. whatever companies. Same-sies. And uh, Oh, and Natty. Oh, I yeah. can't forget my Natty. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> big beer. It's about balance. Totally. Right. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Uh, Heineken is going to discontinue using plastic rings on their six packs. They're going to move to cardboard. I think that's okay. rad. Cool. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that. I'm for I it. I mean... So my only thing, though, is, and we've had problems mm-hmm. with cardboard. Let's see where this is going. Getting wet Damn. and dropping our beer oh. all over the garage floor. So I'm cool with it as long as they, I don't know if they're going to coat it in some way or make it so that it doesn't a dissolve. Or something. Yeah, I, I remember where we were and the beer it was. We yeah. pulled into the garage. We had bought a cold six pack of 805. And it sat in the fridge or the car for like 45 minutes and started to sweat. And then when we, I picked it up by the handle, I was walking through the garage and then it gave through. The sweat sogged out the bottom of the, yeah, it was very moist. <laughs> moist. Aww. Yeah. Uh, the worst word in the world. And so I, yeah, I hope that doesn't happen to these six pack rings. Luckily, I guess if it sweats, I would assume the sweat moves down. The rings are on top of the can. I mean, ho- hopefully, but. I don't know. Yeah. So. But I think it's it's great for the environment. Brian, I didn't know you know sign language. He's actually he's miming the get low was it Lil John sweat oh. sweat, sweat drip, drip down, down my balls. balls. Yeah. From the windows. <laughs> yeah. Right? To the walls. The walls. <laughs> yeah. All these bitches crawl. Of course I'm such I a girl. Could... I only think of Sandra Bullock from that one movie singing it by the campfire. <laughs> I don't have know. You not I don't seen know who that is. Oh, I'm going to have to look it up. Oh. It's his. Go ahead. Intern <laughs> Brian. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, it is the one with oh, Ryan Reynolds. She's, he's saying it's one with Ryan Reynolds. Is this where she's the boss? She's the boss. The proposal. Wait, no, yeah. that's a movie too. She's the boss. No, 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 no. Wait, that was Mona. Sorry, no, it's just, called The Proposal. The boss. Never mind. Sorry, guys. Yeah. If Brian keeps talking, we're going to hand him a microphone. These poor people listening at home. and <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, what the fuck are you saying? Uh, it's like Nick when Nick was on the show. He's Sans microphone. He's Sans <gasps> microphone. It's like when Nick was on the show and he wouldn't hold it to his face and it just sounded like he was in another room. Yeah. That's, that's what oh, people are that doing. Oh, that was uh, Christmas last Christmas, year. Yeah, yeah. That was a good time. Uh, so I'm all for environmentally friendly. Yeah. There was one that we talked about like two years ago where they developed a ring that was like made out of turtle food or something. I remember that. Whatever yeah. happened with that? Nothing. No, I think there are some. I think a couple of breweries are doing it, but yeah. it's not really cost effective. So, but that doesn't break down like cardboard would break down. What do you mean? I mean it. It's biodegradable, right? But it has more structure to it than cardboard. Oh, sure. Yeah, it seemed to be a little thicker. Yeah. Um. And yeah, it didn't break down quite as easy. And then it had like fish or turtle food in it or something. So when it got consumed, if it was in the ocean, it wouldn't be a problem. Uh, and then finally, a little bit of bad news, I guess. Green Flash closes their Lincoln, Nebraska tap room. I'm can, surprised it was still open. Can I, I be completely honest? Know. Please, please. Yeah. Shannon and I are looking at each other, but obviously we did not know there was a Lincoln, <laughs> Nebraska tap room. I mean, I knew that they had a brewery that they were trying to open in like Asheville. Yeah, that I don't and I then think they, they even sold everything They sold off. it off before they even opened. Yeah. I had no idea. First of all, why Lincoln, Nebraska? Why not? I mean, I guess a lot of people drink there. I well, a lot of people drink everywhere. Well, where it's cold. Yeah, and there's nothing Makes to sense. do. Yeah, mm-hmm. sorry, Lincoln. Um, yeah, this this was a weird one. If I remember correctly, this was being opened around the time the shit show happened, and they started being sold off to the investors, oh. and they closed the Asheville project or wherever yeah. it was on the East Coast. This one, for whatever reason, they went through with it, even with all their turmoil. I was surprised to hear it was still open myself, but uh, yeah, it's it's not looking good for Green Flash. I don't know what you guys feel about Green Flash, but I'm like, just go ahead and and close up shop. And I really liked their beer like five years ago. Yeah, like, and, and what was it? Palette Wrecker. I, I liked that one. I don't think I had that one. It's like, I think it's their triple IPA. Oh, okay, it makes sense. The name. 
Yeah, I, you know, I liked it back in the day when I was new to, new to uh, craft beer, but they never evolved. And I just, eh, they're fine. They didn't evolve well. And, uh, you know, if someone's going to close, why not be that? I only had ever tried them when I was kind of new to beer drinking. Mm-hmm. And they were so hop heavy that I just yeah, didn't really like them anyway. So now I'm kind of like, meh. Mm-hmm. And now I don't think their beer is very good. Yeah. So. But hey, maybe uh, I, I know they've reformulated like the West Coast IPA. Maybe it's better now. I haven't tried it yet. Um, they do. I'm being reminded they do own Alpine. And I will say I'd never had Alpine Brewing before Green Flash, but the only thing I'd ever heard about it is that it was so much better before Green Flash bought it. It, oh, it was. Sad. So a couple of my all-time favorite beers were from Alpine. Happy Birthday, mm-hmm. which I used to always try to get. It was usually released around my actual birthday. Ooh. So a couple years in a row, I got it on my birthday, which was really cool. And their duet. Oh, yeah. That's, I think, the only one I've had. It's so good. And then there was another one, um, Nelson. Oh, I've had that one too. Yeah. But I've only had it since Green Flash bought it. So I think Happy Birthday and Duet I had I've had before and after. Okay. I think Nelson I've only had since the change. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I, and do you concur that it went downhill? Um I don't know, man. <laughs> you don't have to. I don't I, know, because like I said, it's my birthday and yeah. I'm usually, you know, already three sheets. Right. Birthday, so yeah, I've I've only had it since, and and people told me it used to be so much better, which is sad. Um, and and I feel bad for saying maybe it's time to close or whatever because it's a craft brewery and I support all craft, but I just I don't think they evolved well, and I don't think they're putting out great beer anymore. Um, the market has changed. We don't need those uh, enamel wreckers, right? Like we talked about earlier, and that seems to be kind of what they're still putting out. So, well, and we've talked a lot about like. Only so many breweries can really get to stone level and maintain. Yeah. Right? So, like, that's sort of where the direction they were going, and they clearly Trying kind to, of yeah. fizzled out. It's it's hard to do that and stay a craft. Right. And keep putting out new beers and being innovative and original. That's That's hard to do. Yeah, totally. And it seems like Stone's the only company that can still put out West Coast IPAs that strip the enamel off your teeth and distribute them and have them purchased by people. But even they have come out with other things. Uh, and when Stone comes out with things that don't strip your teeth teeth off, you know the industry is changing. Yeah. And uh, Green Flash is not. So, in fact, it seemed like they started to go downhill when Chuck, Chuck Silva left. He was their head brewer. Mm-hmm. Opened up mm-hmm. his own place in Paso. Yeah. Which... <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not very good. We haven't tried them. To be fair, we had recently. them in within their first six months of being open. Had no idea that it was Silver Brew, and we just walked into a bar. It was like a tap room. Well, it was a bar slash tap room. Like, they had a full bar. And then, like, oh, there's some brewing equipment. Let's see what they make here. Like, it's a little nano brewery. We walked in. We're like, yeah, what do you got? And, you know, we, we had a few of their beers. They were horrendous. Ooh. So bad. And then we found out who it was. And I was like, oh my God, this is Chuck Silva's brewing. And uh, is he actually the one brewing or does far, he? I mean, I mm-hmm. haven't asked questions, but as far as I know, from what I could tell, we talked to some other local brewers at that time. And I was like, so what's the deal with that brewery sucking so bad? They're like, oh yeah, it's really, they concurred. Uh, but yes, that was, they. it was within their first six months of opening. And there's one thing I know about new breweries. It takes some time to get your gear worked out and all that good stuff. So right. even Firestone, when they expanded, had to yeah revamp and redo their recipes. They dumped a lot of DBA. It's so sad. We- well, and even locally for us, I mean, we're pretty privileged where we live in Ventura County. Yeah, with the abundance of awesome breweries. Yeah. but there are a couple mm-hmm. that are putting out amazing stuff now, but absolutely sucked when they first opened. Oh, totally. Mm-hmm. I won't name names, but there's yeah. one that I think of. Usually, there's. I wonder if it's the same one we're thinking of, but we won't. I'll have my it. people talk to your people. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll talk uh, Sans show and figure it all <laughs> out. So, uh, anyways, all right, that was a lot of uh, talk about Green Flash, more than I think the show has ever seen. I think it's time to wrap things up, go refill our glasses, maybe get some snacks or snacks in the fridge, and I'm very excited. And there's chili downstairs too, so time to go get fat and drunk. Uh, thank you all for listening. Thank you. Ladies, for hanging out. Thank you, intern Brian, for doing the fact checking. Thanks for having us. Yeah, I like this fact checking thing. This is I know, great. it is fun. <laughs> Though someone's going to tell me on the spot how wrong I am. 
today I just happen to be not that wrong. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for listening. Theunfilteredgentleman.com is where you find us. Uh, at the Unfiltered Gentleman on social media, at Unfiltered Gents on Twitter. Deb on the Instagrams is. I don't want to mess it up. Oh, one hop mess. All one word. One word. Yes. And then follow uh, Shannon over here at Beer Harmony Show. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard that show before. It's, it's all right. Yeah, it's Not pretty bad. good. Mm-hmm. You can drunk dial us 805 538 Beer 2337. And don't forget, everyone out there, to stay hydrated. So, on that note, Good night, everybody.